So we have a very sober economic analysis, scientific analysis, excuse me, very sober scientific analysis. Not we, what we need now, what we really need now, is an economic game plan. A new economic narrative that's bold, that's revolutionary, and it may give us, and I put this in quotes, may give us what we need to open the door, get us beyond fossil fuels and uranium, and get us to a new world that can reduce climate change on the planet quickly. The great economic revolutions in history, the big ones, they occur when two things happen, two things. One, we humans change the way we organize energy on the planet, and we have changed the way we've organized the energy there many times. Then two, we change the way we communicate to organize these new energy revolutions. When energy revolutions converge with communication revolutions, those are the pivotal points in world history. They really do change the human equation. They change our temporal orientation, our spatial orientation, our gestalt, our metaphors, the way we see nature, the way we organize our relationships to culture, everything. I'll give you an example. You study cultural anthropology at the university. The first group you read about are the Sumerians in Mesopotamia. Now why do we spend time talking about the Sumerians in Mesopotamia? Because they were the first humans to create high-end hydraulic <laughs> agriculture. Very complicated. They captured the sun's energy in photosynthesis on the plants. The stored grain was concentrated energy. Then women invented a new field called economics because they created the seminal invention that created surplus. Does anyone know what that invention was? Pottery. Pots. Because you can put the grain in and store them and then who gets the grain? Storage, surplus, distribution, and the rest is politics. When the Sumerians went to hydraulic agriculture, they had to indenture thousands of workers to build the canals to establish the dikes. They had to create craft skills, specialized labor. They had to run the granaries and the distribution. They had to create urban settlement. It required a new communication revolution as a command and control to organize this hydraulic agriculture. Writing. Writing. Cuneiform. And what is so interesting is everywhere hydraulic agriculture was invented, the Middle East, India, China, Mexico, and now we even believe Peru, independently, human beings created some form of writing to organize it. In Peru, the not system of calculation. So, the coming together of writing and agriculture 10,000 year multiplier effect, the agricultural revolution. We went from hunter-gatherers, archaic human beings, to village settlements and even urban, small urban settlements. We went from animism to polytheism to monotheism. We changed everything. First industrial revolution. Between 1830 and 1880, communication and energy came together again to give us the first industrial revolution. Gutenberg's print press had been around for several centuries. And of course, the Chinese and Koreans already had a print press even before his. The print press had a powerful social mission during the Reformation, mass producing Bibles and vernacular, created a schism in Christianity. The Reformation, you stand alone with God in your Bible. The Counter Reformation, no, you don't. And then the Thirty Year War and the Peace of Westphalia and the nation state. But the economic mission of the print press didn't become clear until 1830. We invented linotype steam technology to cheap print production. Then we introduced in Europe and the US at the same time public schools, mass literacy, cheap type. That communication revolution converged right at that time with coal, steam, and railroads. First industrial revolution. 
We could not have organized the first industrial revolution with codex in the monastery. Too small. 20th century, telegraph, telephone, first generation electricity, communication converged with oil and the internal combustion engine. Second industrial revolution. Sun setting this afternoon. Entropy wall. Why do I say this? We are on the cusp right now, right now, of a third industrial revolution. A coming together of new communication and energy. I don't know if we'll get there in time. You'll be able to be, find out because you're going to do it. We are in the cusp of the third industrial revolution. We had a very, very powerful communication revolution in the last 15 years as you were growing up. The personal computer, the internet, satellite wireless Wi-Fi communication. To quote the late Marshall McLuhan and his teacher Harold Innes, we outed the central nervous system of a billion people at the speed of light. This software, IT, internet revolution has been grafted onto the second industrial revolution top-down centralized energy infrastructure. We got some productivity out of it, but that is not its anthropological signature. That is not its historic importance. What is happening now, just in the last year, at the cutting edge of business, is this distributed IT software revolution, think file sharing, YouTube, MySpace, Facebook, Wikipedia, Linux, this IT software revolution that's distributed, and that's the key word, distributed, let me go over this. First generation communication centralized, television, radio, centralized. Second generation distributed, open source, peer-to-peer, -peer, flat. You can network with anyone in the world in seven seconds. You're the network. This distributed IT software revolution is just now converging with the new distributed energy regime. Distributed communication to organize distributed energy. And when that happens, that is the third industrial revolution. Its impact on the 21st century should be every bit as dramatic and powerful as the coming together of print and literacy on a mass scale with coal, steam, and rail in the 19th century, the first industrial revolution, and first generation centralized communication, telegraph, and telephone with the internal combustion engine and oil, second industrial revolution. 